Hello there, I'm Kim Clark Champness. And I'm Rachel Harry. Welcome to The Word This Week. On The Word This Week, a special feature on the fantastic life and ideas of visionary writer Philip K. Dick. Somebody said to me, do you read that kind of stuff? And I said, madam, I not only read it, I write it. It has been 25 years since the death of one of America's most popular cult writers, one Philip K. Dick. It's also the 25th anniversary of the release of the movie Blade Runner, which was based on Dick's Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. Now, PKD, as he is known to his fans, is being canonized. The prestigious Library of America will be releasing four of Dick's novels this summer. Not bad for a man who started off in a genre that was considered throwaway fiction. I started out as a pulp writer doing stories for pulp magazines and I never imagined myself to have any importance. Philke Dick was um, probably uh, the most important science fiction writer of the 20th century. Science fiction is and was a great literature of ideas rather than of great characters and Philip K. Dick emitted more ideas per cubic page than any other writer you could imagine. He was less concerned with the intricacies of science and technology than he was with the metaphysical implications of reality and the human brain and especially the impact of drugs uh, mystical experience and so forth on individual humans and human society. When other people were writing about people in the upper echelons of society, Philip K. Dick was talking about the common man. Uh, he talks about workers, he talks about blue-collar people, he talks about policemen. Uh, his focus is on the everyman. He saw things in uh, the 50s and 60s and early 70s that uh, were unmistakably intuitions about the nature of um, American reality that have become incredibly accurate forecasts of uh, the, the world we live in today. You can see things before they happen. Only my future, except with you. I saw far beyond anything I'd ever seen before. We need to get away from here. He's concerned with paranoia. He's concerned with ecological devastation. And he's concerned with, uh, with mystical experience. And these, these three things, we find them in his most famous novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which was adapted into Blade Runner. That was the first cinematic attempt at his work. A new life awaits you in the off-world color. The chance to begin again in a golden land of opportunity and adventure. He's the beatnik science fiction writer. His real natural alliance, I think, temperamentally, uh, was with the anti-authoritarians of the 50s and 60s. Uh, and he is a Bay Area writer, and, and I think in some ways there's a very interesting uh, resonance with the kind of um, stance towards American culture that you find in Kerouac and Ginsburg and William S. Burroughs, the immense distrust of authority the um, instinct that there is a truth to be found in uh, bohemian culture, street life. I think his writing is just what it needs to be. Um, he shouldn't uh, craft sentences like John Updike, you know. Um, he's writing in a popular form, and the way he comes off to me, the way he did then and even now when I, I look back, is a kind of a hip in the sense of what was thought of as hip in the 50s and the first half of the 60s um, voice uh, the words the, the the way he turns a sentence the things he says it has a kind of a hip smart quality to it he was on drugs so that he could stay up long enough to keep writing if they made a drug he, he tried it so not all of his prose is wonderful and he's not what you would call a prose stylist but he was very interested but he was very literary i mean he was interested in french experimental novels he was very much interested in psychology and he didn't just read popular versions i mean he read academic psychology read about mystical experience particularly gnosticism and kabbalah <laughs> Dick didn't just write from the margins, he lived on the margins. He 
surrounded himself with runaways and drug addicts at, at certain points in his life. He never, uh, until the very end of his life, could you know make ends meet. He kind of he really lived as an outsider as well, and um, you know to to the great detriment sometimes of the people around him. It was a tough life for him and his 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 families because he had he had several. I remember one time my fear of the police was so great that whenever I saw a, a parked police car and I was driving along, I would ask my wife to stop our car and I would surrender to the police on the spot <laughs> to whatever whatever crime they wanted to accuse me of. This attitude of mine shows up in my recent novel, A Scanner Darkly, where uh, a narcotics agent winds up reporting on himself, turning over information on himself to, to his higher-ups. Just drive over to my place, kick back, get some tequila. <laughs> it's one of the most... <clears throat> complex and and layered and uh, unusual challenging uh, pieces of literature that I've ever read damage has taken place to the normally dominant left hemisphere and the right hemisphere is attempting to compensate two hemispheres of my brain are competing anybody like me who grew up and, and, and was part of the Berkeley counterculture, became a marked man during the Nixon administration. Uh, it is impossible to tell how much of our fears were justified. Philip K. Dick himself found the Nixonian period tremendously trying personally. Uh, he believed that he was being uh, pursued, so to speak, by the FBI, that he was being uh, observed. Um, I don't know how authentic uh, these these worries or concerns of his were, but to him they were extremely real, and they became a source, I think, of inspiration for him in an odd sort of way in the novels that he wrote. He was worried about uh, oppressive governments. He was worried about the United States government. He was worried about um, somebody tried to blow up his house. I think actually succeeded. And uh, so he had good reason to be afraid and to believe he had enemies. It is impossible to tell how much of our fears were justified. I mean, there were illegal entries. My, my house was broken into. My files were blown open. My, my papers were stolen. We never found out who did it. My attorney said it was the government. There was no doubt that it was the government. But what they were looking for, I don't know. What they thought I was doing, I don't know. I don't even know if it was the government. But um, there were many such illegal entries. They're true stories, and yet you can also sense his relish of the stance of the persecuted uh, paranoiac. When I came home and found my house consisting of nothing but rubble, ruins, chaos, broken windows, smashed doorknobs, blown open files, I said, thank God. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I have real enemies. It's a tremendous relief to discover that somebody really is after me. Philip K. Dick on the big screen, next. Hollywood loves Philip K. Dick for really stupid reasons.